These are coral scientists, and they need your help. There's a lot to love about coral. It grows into beautiful reefs, creates habitat for millions of species, and absorbs wave energy, protecting coastlines from erosion. But around the world, coral reefs aren't doing so well. Sometimes when conditions in the ocean change, coral expels the algae that lives inside its tissue, which can cause it to die. See, coral and algae work together in what is called an endosymbiotic relationship that has been going on for hundreds of millions of years. The coral gives algae shelter to live while the algae produces nutrients through photosynthesis for the coral to eat, up to 90% of its energy source. And to make it even better, coral then excretes ammonium waste that the algae can consume as food. But when coral and algae go their separate ways, a process called coral bleaching, they are both left much less resilient. And the bleaching trend worldwide is worrying. Between 2014 and 2016, the largest bleaching event ever recorded killed corals on an unprecedented scale. So what can you do about it? Dr. Diego Learman and his team at the Rosenstiel School of Marine and Atmospheric Science have developed an exciting project called Rescue a Reef. Dalton Hensley, the program's manager, invited us to their lab and explained the challenges surrounding coral reef restoration. So some of the biggest threats to corals uh, are a result of climate change. So we're seeing increased ocean temperatures causing coral bleaching events, uh, which can lead to mass die-offs. We're seeing increased ocean acidification. So the actual ocean pH is, is uh, decreasing which is really hard for corals to calcify and, and reproduce. In addition to that, we're seeing pollution causing increased instances of disease, which is all leading to habitat fragmentation. It's difficult for corals to really thrive when they're being divided by these, these different stressors. So with all of those stressors in mind and coral populations declining, coral restoration or coral gardening was developed as a means to combat those stressors and actually rebuild coral populations to then promote natural recovery. And so coral restoration is fairly simple. Coral gardening is a lot like it sounds. We're actually growing corals by the thousand to then replant onto local reefs to both promote that natural recovery and actually build structure, that, that coastal resilience that we rely on. Coral gardening works kind of like regular gardening, except underwater. But instead of planting seeds, you start with living pieces of coral that you cut into pieces in a process called fragmentation. So essentially what you do is you start with whole colonies like this, or like this, and then you're going to fragment them into these micro fragmented pieces, which will accelerate their growth. So on a given year, these coral species, you know, Montessori cavernosa or Pseudodoplaria plavosa, will only grow one centimeter per year. So that's a, you know, roughly the, the speed of your fingernail. But by micro fragmenting them, so putting them in this little size, it increases it by three to five times. Fragmenting is tough work. Now this guy gets a little bath. Coral are living things and cutting them into pieces can stress them out and even kill them if not done properly. The team at Rescue a Reef uses creative solutions like cutting the parent coral with a diamond tipped bandsaw. It requires a steady hand, but after some practice, we were prepping a dozen new coral pieces for replanting. Before these new pieces of coral can be planted onto a reef, they need to grow big and strong in a nursery. Rescue a Reef uses a tree-like structure to hold up to 120 coral fragments, like ornaments on a Christmas tree, at offshore locations abundant in nutrients and sunlight. They're a bit tricky to make, but with a little teamwork, we built ours in no time. With our coral fragments ready, we headed offshore to restock the nursery and replenish the reef. It's pretty labor intensive, which is why coral scientists really need your help. So coral restoration or coral gardening has always had a bottleneck in that there's a lack of manpower and funding. But a program like Rescue Reef, a citizen science project that allows volunteers that are interested in it to contribute, really allows you to scale up. We're able to house more corals in our nursery, they're able to be better maintained, and then we can transplant more per year that we wouldn't be able to do if it was just our team of scientists. The Rescue a Reef program engages the public to participate in science firsthand, and it's a strategy that's hugely beneficial. It promotes awareness about the challenges corals face while also contributing to the research itself. 
We love diving recreationally, but being able to help the ocean a little bit at the same time makes the experience even more rewarding and memorable. We arrived on site in the nursery and prepared our tree for its new home. The work at the nursery was twofold. First, we had to deploy the tree and fill it with the fragmented coral we had cut into pieces in the lab. And the second was to collect mature pieces of coral that were ready to be transplanted onto the reef. Working underwater is really challenging, and the team from Rescue a Reef taught us a lot about how to be better divers. Things like regulating your breath while doing a task, maintaining buoyancy, and not stirring up the sediment are important to getting this kind of work done well. We filled our tree with new coral fragments and left them to grow in the sun. And, since we were already down there, gave the older trees a good scrubbing too. With a beautiful batch of healthy coral, we headed to the boat and onto the new reef. Unlike the nursery, here we would be adding coral to the natural landscape itself, and different species require different approaches. For staghorn coral, which grows in a branching nature, we hammered masonry nails into the bed and fastened the coral to them. In time, they'll secure themselves to the reef floor and overgrow the attachments. Massive corals like mountainous star and great star species grow out like a ball and need to be cemented down to the reef on discs, allowing them to grow outward. Restoring staghorn and massive coral is important because they both play a vital role in habitat complexity and coastal resilience. Throughout the dives, we noticed the progress of past work. Corals growing bigger and bigger with more and more fish and other species settling into the up and coming neighborhood. Our experience with Rescue a Reef was incredibly inspiring and reminded us that the world is full of people that are working really hard to protect the ocean and its ecosystem. For recreational divers, volunteering for Rescue a Reef is a rewarding experience that we highly recommend. To book a dive or learn more, check out their website at rescueareef.com.